Heavenly Father, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord, your faithfulness surrounds you. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The God is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. O Lord, how blessed we are for this season in which you are giving us this sweet reminder that you alone are our refuge in times like these. In you alone, Lord Jesus, do we find our shelter from the storm. Tune our hearts and our ears to hear your voice calling us deeper into the true fortress of all our safety and security, the holy of holies of your presence, that you might purify our hearts and refresh our spirits. Come, Holy Spirit, breathe upon these dry bones and revive our hearts and increase our joy as you draw us deeper into the Father's love. Open wide our mouths and fill them as we open up your word this morning and drink deeply from your river of delights. Refresh us with the joy of your presence, Lord Jesus, and guide us in our prayers as we seek first your kingdom. May our hearts overflow with gratitude and our lips with your praise. In your wonderful and worthy name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. Happy Monday morning to everyone. It is a joy to see all of you this morning on this beautiful fall day. We're getting a little bit of rain here in Tennessee. And all of you in California at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, we're just so blessed for your faithfulness to stand in the gap and pray. All you sweet, dear hearts, we just love you. And so blessed that the Lord is uniting our hearts all across this nation in this season, just to blanket our nation in prayer on a very important and urgent season of, and of our history in our nation. You know, we're this, this weekend, I pray you were really refreshed with the worship services, um, both the messages and the worship at Calvary Chapel Knoxville and Calvary Chapel Chino Hills were amazing. There was this one song uh, that they sang Uh, The praise team sang at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. was called uh, The Lord of Hosts. So I encourage you to listen to that. It it really is our anthem for this season. It was just really beautiful and very powerful and encouraging. But I do encourage you to listen to both services. The messages were really amazing, wonderful, and powerful. And I just pray that this last week, I hate to say that, it's really sad. It's the last week of our journey together. Um, that the Lord would just really protect the hours of our days so that we can take advantage and partake of this season that he's giving us to refine and refresh us. He's, he's pouring out his heart to us, and I pray that we can just partake of, of, of all of it uh, in these last uh, few days that we have together. It's just a blessing um, to come together in these morning hours to prepare our hearts and to set the course of our day with our eyes fixed upon our Lord Jesus and just begin our day with his praise. It's, it's the most important way we can be, begin our day and just honor him and give him all the glory that is due his name. You know, this morning's devotional um, is from the story of Elijah. We love Elijah. He's a great, powerful, fiery prophet. Um, but there's some really interesting things the Lord showed in, in this, this account of Elijah um, after his Mount Carmel Um, victory and triumph that he had there that I think the Lord really wants us to meditate upon today and really shows the greatness of God's devotion and care towards us, how much he loves us. And it really is a picture of what he's doing for us in this season. So I'm just going to read just a few verses. We'll continue throughout the day to go a little bit deeper. But this morning, I'm just going to read. This is 1 Kings 19. It's uh, verses 1 through 8. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. And then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, 
and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under the broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. You know, here we see Elijah, this fiery, mighty prophet who called the people to stop wavering between two opinions and choose whom they were going to serve. He called fire and rain down from heaven. He saw the power of the Lord Almighty devour the sacrifice, and he saw a nation fall on its knees proclaiming the Lord. He is God. The Lord, he is God. And you can read that account in the chapter before this one, chapter 18, 1 Kings. But we find that no sooner had he come off the mountain of victory at Mount Carmel that he descended into a valley of defeat. And he found himself drowning in the sea of despondency. He thought that the revival that the nation so desperately needed had finally come. Surely that mighty move on Carmel was proof that the nation was now turning back to God and away from all of their idolatry. But it wasn't so. It wasn't so. The land was still full of its idols, and now his own life was at risk. So what did Elijah do? He threw up his hands, and he ran for his life. And I think, you know, a lot of us have probably had seasons like that in our life where we felt just like Elijah, whether it was in work, ministry, marriage, our families. One moment you're on the Mount of Transfiguration basking in the glory of God. Everything is just joy and blessing and happiness. And then the next moment, it's like the veil is pulled back and the rug is pulled out from under your feet. And you're surrounded by all the filth and the corruption and the lies and the deception and the destruction. And you feel like all of your labor just went up in smoke. It was all in vain. And all you want to do is just do what Elijah did. Throw in the towel and go get in bed and pull the sheets over your head. And that is exactly what the mighty prophet Elijah did. He lay down and fell asleep and wanted to die. 2 Samuel 1, oh, how the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war have perished. There's two things I think the Lord would have us glean from this part of the story this morning. Number one, as we see with Elijah, our strength doesn't come from ourselves. It comes from the Lord. What he did that day on Mount Carmel was not from him. It was from the Lord. He was weary and faint-hearted after his ministry, after he did what the Lord told him to do, because he was just a man. He was just a man. All the power that he had for ministry came from the Lord. And we're only as strong as God makes us. And that is why he provides us these seasons like this. We read in there's uh, this wonderful verse in 1 Corinthians. It tells us, that our strength is not in us and the people and the vessels God uses. He said, for you see your calling, brethren, this is an encouragement to all of us, that not many wise according to the flesh and not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. We we esteem Elijah for what he did, but the Lord would have us esteem him, extol him, exalt him. He's the one that gave Elijah the power that day to do that. 
And in these seasons that God has given us, these sanctified seasons of prayer and fasting, there are times of refreshment that the Lord is giving us, just like we see in the story of Elijah that he gave to him. It's to remind us that we're not alone, that he hasn't left or forsaken us, for us to remember where our strength is and to allow him to refresh us and strengthen us, encourage us, embolden us, and unite us as we fix our eyes on Jesus and all the ways that he's working in the midst of us. And not so much on all those miraculous displays of power that we all want so much. Psalm 12, 121, 2 says, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The greater work and the most important work that God is doing in our lives is that quiet, tender, silent, constant, ever watchful care, watchful care that he's doing within us as he's molding us and shaping us and transforming us into his beautiful character and image. And that's the second message the Lord would have us get from this story, how the tender way he ministered to his servant. He was right there with his servant. He's a great high priest who sympathizes with our weakness. He knows that we are just flesh. And he took the time to restore and revive him. The enemy in his own flesh had gotten the fight out of him. But God wanted to put the fight back in him so he could finish the work that he was called to do to get back on the battlefield and fight. You know, in times like these, when we feel defeated and depressed, and downcast, and despairing for our life. This Psalm 23 is a beautiful source of strength. Verses 2 and 3, he leads me beside the still waters, and he restores my soul. That's what he's doing for us in this season, and that's what he just did for Elijah here as we read that. He touched him. He woke him up. He fed him. He gave him something to drink, and then he let him sleep. You know, the Lord knows exactly what we need in each season of our life and for every circumstance that we're going through. And if we'll just trust him and be still and know that he is God, he's going to bless us and restore us. What Elijah needed most after that great victory on Mount Carmel was sleep. The Lord knew that. He knew his servant needed rest. And he needed a couple of good meals to refresh his body and his spirit. And that's exactly what the Lord gave him. The Lord didn't rebuke his servant for tucking tail and running away. He didn't call him out for praying such an unholy prayer that he should die. He showed his servant his tender love and care. And as Psalm 127 too says, he granted his beloved much needed sleep. You know, this morning, may we see this season as a gift just like that, a season of refreshing from the loving and caring hand of our Lord, from his tender and merciful and compassionate heart. He just wants to refresh us and lead lead us into deepening levels of trust in him so we won't focus so much on all the chaos that's swirling all about us in the world or our own failures that cause us to worry and lose that much-needed sleep that we need. But instead, in this season, he's reminding us of his love so that we will turn our eyes to Jesus and come under the banner of his mighty name, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, who is our refuge and our strength, and find the rest and refreshment we need because he has work for us to do. And the first and most important work is that we abide in him. That's where we're going to get our strength. So this morning, this first hour of the day, it's a time for us to just bow our hearts before him and welcome the day with gratitude and praise and offer from our lips the fruit of our lips, this this offering of praise to bring glory to his name, to settle our hearts in his presence 
So let's bow our hearts and bend our knees and bring our loving Lord the first fruits of our day. That sweet smelling sacrifice of praise. For he's worthy. Let him awaken the heartstrings of our heart. Unburden us as we come into his presence and bring that sweet melody of praise to the Lord. Let us fill this atmosphere from coast to coast with the sweet perfume of his infinite perfections. He's worthy. We want that rarefied, purified air, that atmosphere of heaven to just come settle upon our nation so that people will look up and see the goodness of God and his hand of blessing and favor that he has given us. As we come to this time of praise, I invite you to come to the altar and you can pray into this microphone or to the one in the center there. Just speak into the mic so that everyone who's listening, they love to hear the the word prayed and the praises that are coming out of our mouths. Um, And it can be difficult. It can be difficult to stay in that posture of praise, but that's what this morning is ours for. We'll have time for petitioning later. I just encourage you to just tarry in that heavenly atmosphere in which all the saints and all the holy angels around the throne are are in right now. They're singing that eternal song, Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And they're just singing his eternal praise. And so let's join them in that anthem. Let's lift up up his name and praise and give him glory. Let's go before the Lord. He is worthy. Oh Lord, you are holy, enthroned in the praises of your people. We are before you, O Lord God of hosts, our mighty God, with hearts full of joy. Our blessed Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, our glorious King, it is by your grace that you have prepared for us this way that we may worship you in the beauty of holiness. So we just ask right now, would you unite our hearts with yours and be exalted in our praise? For you alone are worthy, O Lord. It is good to give thanks to you, Lord, and to sing your praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. O God, you are my God, and early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I've looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul will be satisfied with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. O come, Let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King of all gods. Great are you, Lord, and most worthy of praise. Inhabit the praises of your people, Lord, as we lift your glorious high and holy name.
the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase, and God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and your holy mountain. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Lord Jesus, we meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your wondrous works. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of all your power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures to all generations. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? 
or who may stand in his holy place? He who has a clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. Lord, we just thank you and praise you that we can come to you with clean hands and a pure heart, Lord, because of Christ and what he did for us, Lord. And we just, we're not worthy, Lord. We just live our lives and so easily forget, Lord, that sacrifice, Lord. And we thank you for this time of remembrance and just the ability to really, truly focus on you, Father. And I just pray that we continue beyond this 21 days to to continue to lift you up, Lord, and to truly make you king in our lives, Father. And you deserve it. You deserve all glory. And we just love you in Jesus' name. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. You brought my soul up from the grave and have kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled, and I cried out to you, Lord. And to the Lord, I made my supplications. Have mercy on me, O Lord, and be my helper. And you turn for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And Lord, how we praise you that you don't leave us in the ash heap of our despondency. You don't leave us in that place of despair. But you reach down in your tender mercies, Lord, and you lift us up and set us high upon a rock. And Lord, you wipe away all our tears. Oh Lord, we praise you, Lord. Even today, as this refreshing rain falls upon Tennessee, Lord, you say in your word, as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. O Lord, send forth your word and your truth across the airwaves, Lord, and lift those who are in a state of depression and despair. Lord, remove that cloak that hangs heavy upon them and let them gaze upon the beauty of holiness and into your glorious light and lift them up, Lord. God, we love the way you you just tenderly care for each one of us exactly as we need. You know when we need sleep. You know when we need food. You know when we need that word of encouragement. So we thank you, Lord, that you are lifting up your word above all your name in this seasoning and ministering to our hearts in your love. 
We receive it with joy. May our lips speak forth your praise, Lord, for all your mighty works and all your goodness toward us. We are unworthy, Lord, but you, Lord, are worthy of all our praise. Psalm 139, in the day when I cried, the, thou answered me and strengthened me with strength in my soul. The, though the Lord be high, yet he, he has respect unto the lowly. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou will revive me. The Lord will perfect which concerns me. Psalms 34. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Matthew 11. Come unto me, all you that are labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Luke 6, blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now. Psalm 6, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, O oh Lord, how long? Return, O oh Lord, deliver my soul. O oh, save me for my mercy's sake. I am weary from my groaning. All night I flood my bed with weeping. My Heavenly Father, I just pray for all the lonely people and the brokenhearted. There's so many people that are suffering in their homes at night and during the day, and they're just all alone. Please comfort them in their darkest hours and let, let them feel your love when they have no one else, that they can turn to you and that you love them and you will carry them through even when they think they can't make it anymore. In Jesus' name, I humbly pray, amen. This is written by Andre Crouch. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to depend upon his word. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation. My trials come to make me strong, but there were times that I felt so all alone. But in those lonely hours, 
yet those precious lonely hours, Jesus lets me know that I am his own through it all. So I thank God for the mountains and I thank God for the valleys. And I thank God for the storms he has brought me through. For if I'd never had a problem, I would never know what faith in God and his word could do through it all. I've learned to depend upon his word through my darkness and pain, through my sorrows and rain, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. And I've learned to depend upon his word. In Jesus' name, amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. The Lord is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge to us. O Lord. I will praise you, Lord, with my whole heart. I will sing praises to you, Lord, and worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase, and God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him.
God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Awake, lute and harp, I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples, and I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your mercy is great above the heavens, and your truth reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory above all the earth. We praise your glorious high and holy name, O Lord. Lord, for though you are the sovereign king of all the earth, Lord, you are an intimate and personal God who ministers to us in our time of need, touching each one of us personally as we need it. O oh Lord, you know exactly what we each need this morning, Lord, to encourage our heart and to enlighten our load. Lord, so that we will be free from all the weights and bonds that weigh us down and be able to sing your praise in the midst of the most impossible circumstances. Oh Lord, speak to the hearts of your people. Help them to see that you are near, that you haven't left or forsaken them. Oh Lord, you have pouring upon, upon us this time of refreshing, Lord, that we may delight in you and rise up in our despair and dance before you with songs of joy. Lord, we receive your word with joy in our hearts. For you are, you are here. It's not that you are coming, it's you're here. You are with us. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. That is your promise to us in this season. Let us rejoice and praise your holy name. I will extol you, O my God, my King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. 
The Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. O great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. In your holy mountain, you are worthy, O Lord. You are worthy to receive all our glory, honor, and praise. The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and the expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day after day pours forth speech, and night after night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice has gone through through all the earth, their words to the end of the world. In them and in the heavens, he has made a tent for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. He rejoices as a strong man to run his course. The sun's rising is from one end of the heavens and its circuit to the other end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring and refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are reliable and trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and enduring forever. The judgments of of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. They are more desirable than gold, yes, much fine gold. Sweeter than honey and dripping of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned and instructed. Keeping them, in keeping them, there is great reward. Who can understand his errors or, or omissions? Also, keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not rule or have control over me. Then I will be blameless. Then I shall acquit be acquitted of great transgression. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Father, we just come to praise you. We thank you for the morning. We thank you for the day that you've given our lives, for the breath in our chests, for the beating of our hearts, for the sight that you give us, for our ears to hear, for our eyes to observe your creation that just pours forth your name and your glory. The leaves respond to the season, Lord, that you set them in. Father, I praise you and I thank you for all the wondrous creation that you've given us to see that just screams your name to us, Lord. None of us are without cause to know that you are the creator and you are the Lord God of the earth. We praise you, Father. Thank you for waking us up today. Thank you for um, all the many blessings that you will bestow upon our day before we even know them, Lord, and for meeting our every needs in Christ Jesus. We love you.
A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide our striving would be losing? We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Dost ask who that might be? Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sebaoth, his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth. The spirit and the gifts are ours through whom him who through us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He is in the midst of us, and we shall not be moved. Let us behold the works of the Lord and praise his wonderful name. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our good. For it is pleasant, and praise is beautiful, and he is worthy. Lord, let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. O Lord, the house of God is like the gate of heaven when we are in your presence, extolling the greatness of your name and giving you the worship and praise that is due your glorious name. Lord, we would love to linger a little longer in your presence, but you know we must go about our day. But you, Lord, will command your loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, your song will be with us, a prayer of God to my life. O Lord, send forth your light and your truth and let them lead us. Let them bring us back this afternoon to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then we will go to the altar of God, to God our exceeding joy. And on the harp, we will praise you. O God, our God, for you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power and praise. In your wonderful and worthy and holy name, Lord Jesus, the Lord of hosts, we pray. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May you be blessed as you go out in the joy of the Lord today, singing his praises and delighting in his presence. He loves you so much. May you feel the warmth of his presence and his grace and his favor upon you today. I look forward to seeing you back here at noon. And just be blessed in Jesus' name.